This is the fourth video on parametric equations where we're going to have a look at how we can find the area underneath curves when they have been given to us in terms of parametric equations. So, um, classically when we are finding the area underneath a curve, we are integrating our y function with respect to x. So if we have something like x squared minus, uh, x squared plus 3x, I know it doesn't matter, um, we would integrate that we would integrate our y function with respect to x to find the area underneath it. We'd substitute our limits in um, to get the actual area. Our problem here is that our y is expressed as a function of t. So it might be something like t cubed minus 2t squared. I don't know, something like that. Now, so this is expressed in terms of t, not in terms of x. So I cannot integrate this with respect to x. It's not going to work. So what I need to do is change this. I need to change it so it can become a dt rather than a dx. So then I can integrate with respect to t. Now we are able to do that pretty easily using the chain rule. Because I know that I could write dx as being exactly the same thing as dx by dt multiplied by dt. From the chain rule, I know these things would cancel, and I get the same thing I started with. So they are the same thing. So this then allows me to replace my dx here with this. So I can replace the dx with a dx by dt multiplied by dt. So this is my general rule for finding the area underneath the curve when it has been expressed in terms of parametric equations. I take my y function, which is a function of t, I differentiate my x function, which is also a function of t, so I differentiate that with respect to t. I multiply those two things together, and that allows me to then integrate the result with respect to t. So let's have a look at an example. This example here, where we have um, x is t squared, y equals 2t multiplied by 3 minus t, and t is greater than 0, and we have our, our sketch over here. Okay, so my general rule for finding the area when it's expressed in terms of parametric, uh, parameter t is y multiplied by dx by dt and I'm going to integrate that with respect to t. Right, okay, so I know my y, call, my y function, it's there. I need to know my dx by dt, so I need to find that out from here. So I'm going to differentiate this with respect to t. So when I differentiate t squared, I get 2t. Right, so I can now say that my area is the integral of y, which is 2t, 3 minus t, multiplied by dx by dt, which is 2t, with respect to t. Right, I, I can perform this integration quite easily now, and we'll, we'll do that in a moment. I do need to think, consider the limits now though, because what am I integrating between? A really, really common mistake here is just to substitute the zero and the nine in straight away without actually thinking too much about it. Let's just remember that these are my x coordinates. And I'm not integrating with respect to x, I'm integrating with respect to t. So just in the same way as when we changed the limits when we did integration by substitution, 
we have to change the limits here. We need to work out what are the values of t at those points. So when x is 0, so if x is 0, then t is going to have to be 0. When x is 9, so if x is 9 here, so 9 equals t squared, then t would have to be either plus 3 or minus 3, but we know t has to be greater than or equal to 0. So that means that when t, x is 9, t is going to be 3. Okay, so I'm going to substitute my limits in now, from 0 up to 3, and let's work this out. So let's first of all tidy up what's inside the integral. So I've got a 4t squared, so I've got 4t squared from there, multiplied by 3, so it's going to give me a 12t squared, multiplied by the minus t there, so multiplied by the minus t is going to give 4t cubed. Just checking that again. So 2t and 2t makes 4t squared. That would then be a 12t squared and a minus 4t cubed. Good. Okay, now let's do the integration. So uh, this is going to raise the power to cubed, divide by 3, 4. Over here, raise the power to 4 and divide by 4, so it's be a 1. Between the limits of 3 and 0. Substitute the values in now, so I'll get 4 times 3 cubed minus uh, 3 to the power of 4. Taking away, well, substituting 0 into both of those is going to be 0, so actually I, I, I don't really need to worry about the taking away 0 here. And then finally, uh, so 3 cubed is 27 times 3. Four, uh, so it's going to be 108, I think. 3 to the power 4 is 81. So taking those away, the area underneath my curve is 27.